What you're seeing in front of you is a masterpiece under construction for 140 years. This is Basilica Sagrada Familia, a church in Barcelona, Spain. Its construction started in 1882 and is expected to be completed by 2026. Almost five generations have witnessed Sagrada's progress. So why exactly did it take a century and a half to complete this project? The Basilica is designed by Antoni Gaudí, one of the most celebrated architects from Spain. Unlike the design of the usual churches, the Sagrada Familia has an asymmetrical and free-flowing structure. Almost three million people visit it each year, making it the most visited monument in Spain. It even outshines the Royal Palace of Madrid, which takes position number four on the list. But building something of this magnitude and standard is both time-consuming and expensive. Estimates show that construction costs 25 million euros each year. Gaudi planned 18 spires in total in his original design. Out of the 18 spires, 12 are completed and six are underway. The four spires in the center will represent the four evangelists, while those on the outside will represent the 12 apostles. A special tower topped with a five-ton star is dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It's the second tallest tower in Barcelona, with a height of 138 meters. The Virgin Mary Tower was inaugurated in 2022, and the occasion was celebrated by overjoyed Barcelonians. Para para un barcelonés es un motivo de de alegría y de orgullo. Returning to the question in the beginning, why did it take so long for the church to be completed? We have more than one reason for this. The first one relates to funding. Sagrada Familia relies solely on private donations and revenue generation from ticket sales. Even though it now makes good money due to millions of visitors, this wasn't the case in the past. The church's only source of funding back then were devout Christians. The second reason has to do with the tortured history of the project itself. When work began in 1882, the site was open farmland. The project's first designer, Francisco de Paula del Villar, envisioned a neo-Gothic style of church. However, he was quickly replaced due to disputes about the costs of materials. The man replacing him was none other than Antonio Gaudí. He took the project in a completely different direction. At the time, Barcelona was undergoing a cultural movement called Catalan Modernism. During the late 19th century, Barcelona was in a new golden age. The Industrial Revolution had made the people extremely rich, and they wanted to express their richness. Literature and architecture became the favorite outlets of the elites. As more people flocked to the city, Barcelona had to be expanded. This was a dream for architects as there was now plentiful space for more buildings. Antony Gaudí was the poster child for this movement. The movement gave birth to many memorable buildings like the Sagrada Familia, Casa Batlló, Casa Milá, Palau de la Musica, and others. Straight lines became boring and the architects started experimenting with curves and shapes found in nature. The exteriors were adorned with rich decorations, sculptures, flowers, etc. Each of these elements is evident in Sagrada as well. The church has three facades, nativity, passion, and glory. Each one depicts a key moment of Jesus Christ's life. Nativity represents Jesus' birth, passion represents his death, and glory shows his ascent to heaven. If you like the video so far, kindly take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We bring the latest news in the construction industry with two new videos each week. Enough with promotion, let's get back to the video. Nativity was the first and only facade built during Gaudi's lifetime. With time, Gaudi had become more religious and workaholic. He moved into his workshop inside the Sagrada Familia and gave up all other work in 1914. He wore shabby, ragged clothing and stopped shaving. On June 7, 1926, during his daily walk to confession, Gaudi was hit by a tram. People mistook him as a beggar and refused to take him to the hospital. Later, a laborer from Sagrada recognized him, but it was too late. A great man of his time died a pauper's death. He was laid to rest in the unfinished crypt of the Sagrada Familia. After his death, his disciples took over the project. Gaudi's death wasn't the only misfortune of the crook. In 1936, the Spanish Civil War started. Extremists set the church on fire and destroyed Gaudí's workshop. Plans and photographs were burnt, and the plaster models of the church smashed. The architect Luis Bonet Pringari rescued the remains of Gaudí's models. After this massive destruction, 
the church was neglected for more than a decade. So how is the current church being built after the initial designs were lost? Believe it not, this colossal project was saved by a 20-year-old student from Cambridge. In the summer of 1977, Mark Burry visited Sagrada to work on his thesis. Little did he know, he would be devoting the next 40 years of his life to rescuing Gaudi's masterpiece. He was offered a consulting role after impressing the construction directors. After closely studying the restored models of the church, he discovered that at the heart of the Gaudi's complex designs were simple geometric shapes. He used aeronautical software to predict how Gaudi would have designed other parts of the church. Modern technology breathed a new life into the long-abandoned church. And it worked. In 2010, Pope Benedict XVI consecrated Sagrada and designated it a minor basilica. The central spire of the church represents Jesus Christ. The Jesuit Tower uh, will be the tallest construction in Barcelona. 172.5 meters. Upon completion, Sagrada Familia will be the tallest church in the world, rising almost 10 meters higher than Ohm Minster in Germany. One of the many problems faced by the construction team was balancing the weight of the Virgin Mary Tower. The church's foundation was designed by the first designer, Francesco Villar, in 1882. He envisioned a smaller church as opposed to the massive giant of Gaudí. To solve this problem and also speed up the construction, Sagrada's team reached out to ARUP, a multinational engineering firm. ARUP came up with an innovative yet effective idea. Instead of using the traditional masonry blocks, stone panels were used as the main construction material. As a result, the thickness of each component was reduced from 1 to 100 millimeters to 300 millimeters. We ultimately came to this idea that we could do the whole tower using post-tensioned stone panels. So this is the idea of making relatively thin pieces of stone in blocks, stringing them together on steel rods and stressing them together. It prevents the panel itself from folding under wind pressure. Stone is plentiful, low carbon, and beautiful. On the other hand, steel and concrete have to be mass-produced in factories and damage the environment. By shifting to stone, the construction industry can see a massive shift. Technology is a key alley of the church. Since you can't create a life-size model for a building as big as this, you can do so virtually. The design team utilizes virtual reality to see spaces, volumes, geometries, and distances in their real size. Once the design is ready, 3D printers create a miniature model in just seconds. But the real potential of 3D printers goes way beyond models. Imagine a house like this, or this created in two days. Researchers from the University of Maine created this 600-square-foot home from just wood fibers, sawmill waste, and bioresins. Watch it yourself. These printers can also create larger homes, but that would require more time. Dubai holds the record of having the world's largest 3D building, and this is just the beginning. Soon, 3D printing will be creating whole neighborhoods in a matter of weeks. According to UN Habitat, almost 3 billion people will need a home by the end of the decade. 3D homes can provide a cheaper and more reliable alternative for people who can't afford a steel and brick home. Sagrada's team is also automating tedious tasks to save labor. For example, they're using computer-controlled saws that cut stone. The surface, however, is still finished by a craftsman. The final texture is hand work. It's not a machine, it's not a digital process. The final texture is a man. Even though the basilica has a jaw-dropping presence, there are still those who don't think much of it. After all, this is a project that consumed billions of dollars and still took more than a century to complete. The roots of its controversy go far back to the church's conception in 1881. Sagrada Familia was conceived by philanthropist Josep Maria Bocabella as a place for atonement. He bought a plot of land just outside the city and appointed a team to oversee the process. He did this to oppose the growing influence of left-wing forces in Spain. Godí became a favorite of right-wing people who described him as the genius of Catalonia. The public would donate to the church to win God's forgiveness. After Godí's designs were vandalized, architects and historians began to interpret Gaudí's ideas to suit their agendas. Most of them deplored the quality of the original plans. 
The hijacking of the church for various political movements undermined its actual purpose. Some despise the basilica's unconventional design. The famous author George Orwell described it as one of the most hideous buildings in the world. He added that the anarchists showed a lack of taste for failing to blow it up when they had the chance. Some tourists even compared it to a melting sandcastle. Others mocked it that it will never be completed due to uncertain financing. In fact, during his last years, Gaudi himself would ask for donations from passersby. The controversy surrounding Sagrada Familia hasn't died with time. After the COVID restrictions were lifted, Barcelona saw a huge influx of tourists. This led locals to take their anger on the streets. A small group also attacked the tourists with water guns. Mass tourism made the city center apartments expensive and unavailable for locals. The famous Basilica, along with other hot destinations in Barcelona, is part of the reason why. Some question as to how the completed structure will be maintained, especially given its intricate design and the potential for wear and tear over time. But no matter what critics say, the Sagrada's hype will always overcome the hate. It's a place that has inspired mystery and a longing for creativity. It has been featured in the background of films like The Da Vinci Code, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, and The Spanish Apartment. The famous author Dan Brown used it as a setting for his book, Origin. In 2005, UNESCO declared the Nativity facade as the World Heritage Site. In November 2023, the four evangelical towers were lit up for the first time during the mass event. The central spire of Jesus Christ will take two more years, coinciding with the completion date. Sagrada is slated for completion in 2026, on the 100th anniversary of Gaudi's death. This will be a brilliant tribute to an artist who dedicated his entire life to this project. The use of stained glass, ceramics, and ironwork is obvious in most of his pieces. This is evident specifically in Casa Calvet. Gaudi made this place for a textile manufacturer, Perry Martyr Calvé, who used the basement for his business and the upper floors as the residence. Casa Milá was his last civil works. The use of stone is dominant throughout the facade and the balconies. It features an iconic terrace with sculptured chimneys and air vents. It's speculated that the George Lucas, the director of Star Wars, was inspired by the chimneys for the design of the helmets of the Imperial soldiers. If you do get a chance to visit Barcelona, these places should be on your list. What's one thing that fascinated you about Gaudi's Sagrada Familia and his other projects? Comment down your thoughts below. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch up in the next video.